Hello, my name is Francisco Montoyamar. I'm archaeologist and historian. I'm working in Universidad Autónoma de Zacatecas in Mexico. And I'm going to present project uh, called La Esperanza Candy and Chocolate Factory in Zacatecas, Mexico. Thank you. The city of Zacatecas is the capital of the state of the same name. It's located in the central north of Mexico. This mining city holds the titles of the very noble and loyal city of the Our Lady of the Zacatecas, granted by King Felipe II of Spain on June 20, 1588 in San Lorenzo de El Escorial, Madrid. Likewise, he granted him the coat of arms, an emblem in which the Cerro de la Bufa was included. This city was important for colonization since it was an important point of the route to the Northern territory of the new Spain. Currently, its main economic activities are mining, agriculture and tourism. It's known for its layer deposit of silver, gold and other minerals, its colonial architecture and its importance during the Mexican revolution. La Esperanza, factory of sweets, chocolates, and ice, is located in the historic center of the city of Zacatecas, within the polygon declared by UNESCO, Cultural Heritage of Humanity in 1993. It was founded in, in 1890 by Pascual Félix Fernández. The factory continued to work on ice until the late 1960s, and on sweets and chocolates until the late 1990s. The building, which dates back to the early 19th century, was not built for a factory. In the last decade of the same century, it was remodeled to start a sweet history. It is currently owned by the Felix Cherit family, descendants of the founder of La Esperanza. Its multiple adaptations have given rise to an eclectic style in terms of its construction. Courtyards, warehouses, and machine rooms contain an incalculable and interesting industrial heritage that can be roughly summarized as mechanical, electrical, hydraulic, and gas installations, machinery, equipment, and tools for the manufacture of sweets, chocolates, and ice raw materials, candy labels, boxes and wrappers. In addition, a vast documentary archive where there are accounting books, machinery, catalogs, installation plans, customers lists, supplier lists, employer payroll, photographs, awards and recognition, among others. Symbolically and iconographically, Hope was a divinity venerated in Rome. She was represented with a joyful air, smiling and crowned with spring flowers. The typical color of La Esperanza is green, that evokes promising fields of good harvest and shady fields that welcome pilgrims and walkers. The anchor attribute, which was added later, indicates Hermes and solidity. The anchor fixed to the bottom of the sea helps the ship to the withstand storms without moving. It symbolizes security against factors of alteration and instability. Pascual Felix Fernandez was born in Ciudad Garcia, currently the city of Jerez de Garcia Salinas, capital of the municipality of Jerez, Zacatecas State. On July 12, 1862. At the age of 12, he was orphaned by his father and mother and moved along with his sisters, Teresa and Luisa, to the city of Zacatecas. In this city, Pascual develops his culinary skills, learning in his native Jerez from his uncle Francisco Cristerna, and produces bread, baked fruit, and artisan sweets, 
with the help of his sisters. He makes various products that he himself sells from door to door. The quality of its products made the demand grow and this. With a great effort, it raised a capital that will allow it to found a limited company in 1890. That is where La Esperanza factory of candy and chocolate was born. Pascual Felix Fernandez died on November 23, 1947 in Mexico City. His remains rest in the pantheon of La Purísima in Zacatecas. When his father died, Daniel Felix Espinosa took care of the factory for almost 50 years. El Mago, the magician, as Daniel Felix is pleasantly reminded, was born on September 3, 1980 in Zacatecas, Zacatecas. After the Second World War ended in 1945, Pascual Felix decided to send Daniel, his son, to Mexico City to learn and learn about the modern techniques and machinery of various industries in the sweet and chocolate industry. El Mago works in the Larin and Usher factories, where he remains for almost three years until November 19. 47, when his father dies. During this stay in Mexico, he cultivated one of his childhood patients, magic. His charismatic presence make him little by little the main assistant of the outstanding Mago Fu Manchu. The magician passed away in 1996. La Esperanza has undergone multiple construction modification mainly around the year 1890 when the factory was founded and then at the end of the 1940s. These modifications were due to the adaptation of techno technical progress and innovation in machinery and equipment for the production of different sweets and chocolates. In terms of machinery and equipment, the inventory includes countries such as Germany, Austria, Belgium, Denmark, Spain, the United States of America, France, England, Mexico, and Sweden. The factory is a space that covers approximately 800 square meters distributed over two floors, ground floor and basement. Uh, we are going to see some machinery of three rooms. Dolores Machine Room. Board containing 10 pairs of rollers with different figures to, such as fish, peanuts, balls, barrels, coins, among others. Dolores Bar Thread Bowling Machine, three roll die cutter for candy. These rollers are 59 centimeters long by one inch in a diameter, and the material is cast steel. It has a ventilation system that serves to cool the candies so that they can be handled for packaging. Industrial mixer made in Denmark by Marin Effort Masking Fabric. Vertical planetary mixer, five breeders were identified, two balloon, two fork, and one hook. This blender is used to make the mass of low density and very soft chewy candies, such as nougat, gummies, marshmallow, and centers to cover them with chocolate, among others. Dough hook is used to stretch the caramel so that it retains its consistency. One sweet table temperate the dough is placed suspended on the hook and by stretching it, it's hung again, repeating the operation several times. With the above, a satin or shine is achieved by incorporating air during the process. semi fijas for press punch for candy, works with the strength of the hands and feet. By stepping on the pedal and by a rocker effect. Four cast bronze presses with concavities of certain shapes such 
as dolls, flowers, peanuts, among others, contract. And this is a general view of the Dolores machine room. Multi-machine room. Toaster manufactured by J.M. Lehmann in Germany. When cleaning this machine, samples of corns and peanuts were collected, but surely another, other materials were rusted. It was struck mechanical energy transmitted by shaft pulley belt. The fondant machine has a hopper where the child is deposited. From this hopper, it falls into a cylindrical chamber provided with a double wall to cool it with running water in an adjustable way. Inside, there is a hollow and refrigerated auger to cause the rapid cooling and whipping of the syrup. Cooler table. Use it to empty the hot syrup, just cook it into the copper suspense. They are provided with a cooling system with water jackets and internally equipped with bufflets so that the circulation water follows a predeterminate path between both walls of jacket to avoiding permanently hot or cold areas. A small rotary pans for the elaboration of candies, draggers, snacks, and other confections. A rotary pan is a ferrital copper container whose diameter varies mounted on a shaft fitted with a pin in and crown and place it at the angle of 45 grades. The speed of these pails is from 20 to 22 revolutions per minute. Die board contains rollers and presses for five different machines. It is three meters long by one meter high and has three Thomas Mills and Brothers brand roller racks. In addition to this, there are other from two Parisian workshops, Baldox, Souk and Lambert, a Mexican foundry of Rutilio Magnon, and a German workshop of Lichtenbeckern in Magdeburg. Patio de Pailas Rotativas. Of the five rotary pails, the PRG1 is the only one made for steel. The other four pails are made of copper and were manufactured by Thomas Milson Brothers. In the case of pails two, three, four, and five, these measure 40 inches in diameter. In their largest parts and can vary their speed from 22 revolution per minute. At the trains to the warehouse, we find a burner or stove two shells for a, an oil tank and a dozen wooden drawers of sweets. The burner is handcrafted as it consists of 200 liter metal drum cut in a half wear and LP gas burner is housed inside. Previously, this burner was fed by the fuel that supplied it by gravity from the oil tank, place it on the stove. Three wooden brackets were recorded on the south wall that supported the mechanical system 5SKF model F9 bearings, three stepped pull pulleys to vary speed, two SKF pulleys on 16 inch and the other 17 inch, an unmarkable pulley 19 inch and two steel shafts. In this area during its product life, the walls and ceilings showed a great presence of soot and dust. The patio flower was found covered by several layers of melted sweet. To remove them, we used hot water. 
Well, I want to highlight the largest amount of ma machinery and equipment from the Thomas Milson Brothers factory in Philadelphia. A dozen manual machines were found in good conditions. In addition, there are a good amount of molds, dies, burners, sales pans, and others. The dissemination of our work was constant throughout guided visits to the site for audiences of different ages. Local newspaper reported on the implementation in, of the project and this served to publicize the importance of preserving industrial heritage. From proposals such as a restaurant, a bar, a cafeteria, even others such as cultural center and exhibition center or a museum, the final decision of the fate of the factory will be made by the Felix Charit family. The idea of a site museum is a possibility that is analyzed by the family and we hope that it can be realized that in sense. Thank you very much. See you in Lake Valley. Thank you. <laughs>